In our previous van build, we had a pretty small fridge and not a lot of fresh food storage, which meant that we needed to find a grocery store and restock every four to five days. This time, we have much bigger ideas. For two people who will be living full-time in the camper van, we wanna be able to go at least 10 days off grid with no need to stop off at any store. Today we'll be giving you a full kitchen tour and running through all of the extras we have made to make sure that this van is a sustainable home for the many years to come on the road. Some of the appliances that we are incorporating include a 124 liter fridge, an oven, an induction cooktop, a sink with filtered water for drinking, and a whole bunch of extras that we're gonna be integrating into some of the furniture to come, such as a coffee maker, a wine rack, a spice rack, a blender, and of course the things like a rice cooker. The weather's getting colder, we're realizing that we're gonna be hitting the road midwinter, so we need to really make sure if we get caught in a blizzard, we're not gonna get hungry. Stay far from the camera. Today is a beyond slovenly looking day. Wow. Well, I it. think that's gonna good. Uh, look good actually. Love it. I forgot what we picked. I was kind of nervous. I find this interesting because lately my decision making has been always based around fastest possible way and minimum effort to do the job. So this is a result and I like how the design turns out. Meaning that I just keep the original surface of the plywood from the back. I etched all around with a 2mm ABS and router 2mm radius from inside of the drawer. And then router this edge flat from this side, sanded it nice and straight, and then gluing the laminate. Laminate I just trimmed with a router first, then I have a subtle little 45 degree angle to clean the edges, and uh, it looks pretty neat in my opinion. It's like all the edges are nicely protected with ABS, and then you don't have two millimeter edging all around like this. It's all covered with a laminate from the front. I've never done that before. I've never seen it before. It kind of ended up being practical approach, let's say. And I think it looks neat. I'm pretty sure I used 14 mil lightened plywood for the carcass of the unit. And then I think around eight millimeters for the drawers. That was right on the edge. It's kind of difficult to get short enough screws to attach the runners. And I think it's worth it because that really made it lightweight. The heaviest part feels like the runners are. Then I measure three times just to make sure these handles are exactly where they're supposed to be. Because there is no more adjustments once you drill the holes. I would really be interested in comparing stats, but I think you can't get much lighter with aluminum than this. But again, I would like to know, it definitely would be more expensive and just this Loctite and screwing little bolts together is, is not for me. Unless you try to show the aluminum as a static feature, which I don't really care about. We have plenty of nice things in here. <laughs> This is the least used space in the whole camper van, right behind the wheel while difficult to access, perfect placement for this extension cord or self-retracting drum. Perfect to plug the camper van in the wall. So this drum is attached here and, and we're gonna be wi uh, running the wire through the floor. And Pavel is designing 3D printed uh, kind of a dolly from the bottom of the van. So you just go from a side, <clears throat> grab the cable here, and like a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> you pull the extension cord out, <laughs> plug it to the car charging station, and just camp anywhere in a um, car parking situation. And pay 4 kilowatts, and because this is pretty small pa uh, power bank compared to cars, <laughs> this is pretty much like anywhere free parking, and always charging the bank and running all the appliances from in there. So this is absolutely killer feature when you don't have to store extension cords 
this is a three phase wire so we can really be running up to nine kilowatts when we are consuming the power we can be charging the lithium charging the bikes and we can be running the heated floors cooking on electricity everything so now we have this protected inside it's safe it's away from uh, weather conditions i like that's just the cable drum is hidden safely inside water protected not like saran wrapped last time that was, that was trashy solution <laughs> And then we have a pulley system from below. It pretty much loops the wire this way so I can be pulling and it still retracts straight up. And we're still missing one more pulley to get us over the chassis of the car. So that's gonna be just a wheel there sliding on that wheel. Everybody happy. So we can just plug it in the whole car automatically switches from inverter to this grid and then wirelessly from my phone i can use the relay and start charging the lithium with two kilowatts so take this as a prototype we're not even close to being a finished stage um, don't worry this will be well protected we're definitely going to seal all of this intake where water would eventually get and we're definitely going to 3D print a nice hook and nice cover for all of these connectors. So the theory is that at the end, you're gonna pull it out, retract it back, and then just slide it exactly to a slot that is waterproof and holds this in place. <laughs> but it's gonna be probably next week. <laughs> This is not a small kitchen anymore. That is awesome. Plus, another one right here, another one there, big counter there. It's so good. Plenty. As you can see, all of us are here soaking up the sun as much as we can. And I told Lottie I'm supervising the Jackery, although it does not need supervising. <laughs> This battery is redefining portable clean energy. So like this, I have 93 watts. And if I go flat, just flat installed solar, half the power, 45 <laughs> watts. So the tilt will be crazy beneficial. Like this time of a year, this is 93 watts out of 100 theoretical. That's awesome. We have the Jackery Explorer 1000 and you can charge this thing up by either a wall socket or via the solar panels. It's so easy to use that we were fine with lending it to Lottie's brother Radek for his fishing trip because all of the information that you need to know about the battery is shown on the display. If you wanna go off grid without a worry in the world to how you're gonna charge up your devices, head down to our description below and get your hands on a Jackery product today. This will be a nice little switch panel from um, that will be the top one will be the heated floor so we can reach from the bed uh, and turn on the heated floor before we get up. <laughs> this will be changing the valve blowing under the bed or not. Mm -hmm. And this last one is just the BMS that we need to apply somewhere and it's going to be same style like like this panel. So blue with a with a black uh, prints as a text explaining what it is like nice little cute panel here. This feels like a kind of a new thing to me that I learned making such a label. It's such a simple, easy print. It only takes maybe 10 minutes to make. It's just a two millimeters, one color on the top of it is a different color as a text. And it's so simple and it's only double sided tape from one side sticked on it and then holes through the, through the board itself. I was unsure whether I took too low power floor heating mats because I didn't want to be really draining the lithium too fast for just the floor heat. So I went for what was that 100 watts uh, square meter I think. So this strip takes around 160 watts when it's running and I was pretty disappointed at the beginning. I was like wow you can't really even feel it. The point is it takes like 10-15 minutes to heat up through the vinyl and then it's nice and comfortable heat, subtle and running 160 watts means 1.5 k 
kilowatt hours in 10 hours is pretty good deal that would run for a long time before we drain the lithium isn't it nice cute little detail finishing it all off I like <laughs> with it. the same design what would you say to people who are like the labels are over the top so is that even a question yeah i think so it is. there's a lot of switches you don't remember yep exactly morning everybody it is 7 a.m we are in the van we slept here last night uh, it was our second time sleeping here with some awful sheets that we've been borrowing <laughs> i just heard lottie's dad show up at the workshop lottie's up i think he's starting a fire it's actually really warm in here last night um well insulated as you know let's see oh, let's give me some more nice and uh, sleep-wise, if I am here to report, I slept pretty well. <sighs> Should we go with again? I love the purple. My, the purple is my favorite. The lights on. And then I just close this one. But I should have done that one. Lottie woke me up. These two started being out of sync. <laughs> We think there's a, a wire loose, but we'll fix it later. It's low priority. It was really warm in here. I know, right? You sleep well? You didn't sleep as well as me, I don't think. Good morning. Uh, time to get up. These glasses, jacket, and sweats, baby girl, that's a get up. Mm -hmm. It's chilly outside, but I'm ready to burn. <laughs> Super hot fire when I move, better feel that burn. Get up before the sun is up, baby, let's work. Good morning. Ready or not, here I come, let's work. Good morning. Get up before the sun is up, baby, let's work. I want to go through a little bit of the nitty gritty details about this kitchen that we have not touched on yet. Uh, such as the appliances we're using and the reason we're going with these decisions and along with some of the layout choices, latches, weight, all of that. Knock, knock. No. They loved me. I read the comments. Hello, everyone. I'm Tara. Just here to observe. You can't be here for this. This is like a complex scene. I need to be like really on it and focus. I'm not going to say anything going to be quiet as a mouse. You'll forget I'm here. I'm just, I just like the show. All right, then I have no problem with it. I just need to like be in the zone, you know? This entire kitchen was made out of lightweight plywood. We used these same latches last time. They were very dependable. We were so happy with how they performed. So we went with them again, just push to open, nice and easy to use. Except you can notice for this bottom unit, which is our garbage unit, which will come with a foot pedal to open up. So when you have full hands of trash, you can just stomp that and it will slide on out. One of the things we love about this kitchen is the insane depth when it comes to these drawers. This is like the junk drawer, main drawer. We can even fit plates in here. Look how massive this is. You can put blenders, maybe a few smaller pots, pans. You can do stuff like tins down in this one and then some of your bigger items, maybe bigger pots and pans, strainers, bags of onion, all of that here. Then we have the unit that we haven't shared with you guys yet. This is under the sink. This is completely blocked off now. Half of it is for the sink depth as you know and then the other half is where the e-bike is we have a few shelves in here that is perfect for some of our cleaning appliances maybe extra garbage bags some windex that sink looks already really really small to be honest with you okay like way too small okay this is temporary by the way i don't i don't think it's that small i honestly don't get where this big sink obsession comes from. You notice people get more of the square ones, like much bigger stuff that you can just put things in we there. Did, it's the same one we had last time. It worked awesome for us. The bigger the sink, the more kind of counter space that you're sacrificing. It's just the, it's just the van thing that everyone knows when you watch the tours. It's like big sink means big van life knowledge. It's a common phrase, kind of like the phrase like the bigger the hoop, the bigger the hoe. I've heard that before. All right. And sorry, what's the thing behind you? Oh yeah, we haven't really shared that yet. This is the fridge. The bar. It's kind of like a handle, but it could also be for, oh, we could actually put our 
cloth there too. We could have a separate one. I don't know. This is where the fridge is going to go. Look how big that cutout is. It's a massive fridge. I'm just going to pretend you don't notice that betrayal. And if you don't justify your stance, we're all going to kill you. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can talk about, I can talk about the stove. This is an induction cooktop. I thought you said, uh, induction stoves are stupid. I don't think that I think it's stupid when people have induction cooktops, when they have 150 Watts of solar, a tiny battery, and they're not even connected to, to their alternator. That's when gas is going to outrank. And you. then I think you said, that gas bottles are stupid because different countries have different connections and sometimes it's hard to fill up. Sounds like you think everything is stupid. We've tested the bigger than one like this before. You increase it so smoothly. It's such like a cool piece of tech to interact with. And I encourage people to check this one out. You don't even have like a protection shield thingy for the fabric. We were, we're still kind of brainstorming how we want to have the splashback, a, a temporary one or a fold up one or something along those lines. Satisfied? It's not that you're unlikable. It's just that every time you talk, I like you less and less. Not, I'm not really having fun anymore. Normally I have fun filming and you're just like sucking the fun Listen, from me. Listen, I'm noticing a little bit of an ego today, a little bit sass. <laughs> I bet it's from all those pajama compliments you got in the comment section. I read those too. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the PJ girl, you can't just show them the good PJs. No, no. <sighs> I'm embarrassed for you. Listen, I stand behind this purchase. These are my favorite ones. But carry on. Let's get through it. Talk about storage or something. Storage is always fun for you. Sure, sure. We can talk about storage. On its own, this unit would certainly not be able to house a lot of our food. However, we have a lot tucked up here. Our main glass is already mounted all of our grains. So that takes a lot of the storage needs out from under here. And we have our mega fridge, which is where so, so much of our food and drinks will be stored. Lottie does a whole segment about our fridge and why we ended up not doing a 12 volt fridge in another video. I will link that like above in the card thing and click up there to learn more. Honest, I never really click those little card whatnots. I don't click, I don't click those. Why are you putting it there? That's not my problem. I'm finding my groove again. I feel more confident now. Yeah, such a groove, such a groove. Also, when it comes to other fresh fruit storage, we have our two racks for fruit. So for apples, for bananas, for the quick to grab kind of snacks, we can keep those Where here. are you gonna put all your uh, sauces, like your oils, your vinegars, your peanut butter, all that stuff? Just there, just on the top there. That's why we have a little gates, keep it all in. Now you kind of need to, justify the oven thing because I've seen that you've talked a lot of shit about microwaves. Yeah, I don't like microwaves. I noticed and I remember. Microwaves are majority of the time used to heat up frozen food or processed food or reheat leftovers. Frozen food is less of a thing when you're living out of a van or when you're traveling and reheating food can be done on the stove. This is an oven, small kind of very cute miniature version the reason we got this is because we love making homemade french fries, like cutting up potatoes, throwing some oil, salt, everything, putting them in. Also want the ability to make our own bread, uh, maybe make cupcakes, pizzas, when we have little parties in the van. Really good so far. Remember, we're gonna have and another counter side over here where the bathroom is and my closet and everything else, but what gets me the most stoked about this kitchen is the flow. You know what? You don't need to talk about the flow. It's just so good. No, we've all heard it enough. Take the food out, you wash it, you cut it, you cook it, you serve it. I warned you. Warned me? Oh my God, that's bad. It's so bad. <laughs> These are for private Margaret time and you know Not it. Not even the person who made those expected anyone would buy them. You're such a <laughs> traitor. They're never gonna watch this channel again. This is very satisfying how perfectly it fits. I made a template, routered it, and then also routered a little bevel here because this one has a bevel. And why would you be cutting bigger hole? 
because this will be also seen from the other side when you actually mm -hmm. fold it down. It's kind of okay-ish. She explained that that front is a sticker. Huh? What sticker? The sticker on the front. I bet it looks like on camera that those are real stats too, like Pavel thought. Oh, this? Yeah, Pavel, <laughs> Pavel thought it's solar powered, <laughs> that it runs all the time you know, even without batteries. Oh, <laughs> 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 Freshly baked custom labels. <laughs> so satisfying. <laughs> Just decided to switch the solar to be over here, to be closer to where we sit. This is a very small scale project, but this is just, this is going to be in our faces all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool because now when we're traveling, we can be sharing real time stats with people and everybody can know exactly what's going on. Even in the background of scenes, like oh. People are usually looking at how much they gain from a solar, but voltage is kind of a, it's a nerdy stat. <laughs> huh? Instant fix, mammoth power. Very nice. Just a little bit of a mammoth. Shoulders are burning. Burn the shoulder. <laughs> the burning shoulders. Burn the shoulder. Okay, the way it is, hold it like that again. Yeah. So I'm gonna just apply mammoth on them and close the door and clamp it together. Cool. Done. Bam, bunny. As this dries, we're leaving some of these spaces open in case we want to like fill things in. And then over here is where that solar lift button thingamajig is gonna be. And then just here are dimmers for these uh, ceiling lights so we can dim them down. I don't think we updated you that the kitchen now has a dimmer as well. Just here, which is a cool little thing. One step closer. Oh, wow, love it. That sells the van. Statistics, what is happening outside, what is the solar battery, mm, I can heat up the feet. <laughs> Fresh water release. Don't ever touch that button. Okay, mm. don't ever touch that. That's, That's for it. like when you're stuck or when you're driving really long distances or if you need to like winterize or empty the tank, it's, it's nice to have. It's kind this. of an emergency button. Or if yeah. you want to spray somebody behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do free water if you want that. Oh, that's the extra bad guy. 